This episode of Brian Barchick Vlog is brought to you by the crazy Speedy. That's right. Actually, the crew came through this morning and said, Speedy is just going crazy today. He's walking around. He's knocking things over. He's pushing carts. So I figured it's a perfect day to put a Speedy cam on and see what's going on. You know, I think it's because spring is here and the weather's starting to warm up and he's ready to go outside. The temperatures outside are still a little bit cold, but I think Speedy is ready for some outside time. Regardless, I'm going to throw a Speedy cam on him. People ask me all the time how I got RJ so tame. And the truth is, it's all about working with them constantly, creating a relationship with these animals. I mean, RJ always knows what he's gonna get from me. He always knows I'm gonna treat him with respect. I'm never gonna restrain him and grab him and kind of close his mouth or anything like that. And as with almost all animals, as long as you can create that relationship where there's no surprises, you can eventually kind of get them to do what they want to do. In particular with crocodilians and, and alligators, of course. It's always about just kind of continue the same pattern over and over again. One time, a trainer told me, if you do something wrong with an alligator, just make sure to do it wrong every single time. Because once they get used to a pattern, that's the pattern that they'll follow. So with RJ, it's a lot about sounds, hand gestures, stuff like that. And of course, when they're feeding really well, you can reward them with a food item. So again, it's a stimulus response situation, right? So if you tell them something or say something or they hear a sound and they get rewarded somehow, in this case, maybe handling or leaving them alone or whatever the case may be, and then when he's feeding really well, the reward is food. So say I want him to come up on his perch and I use a clicker or a particular sound and then every time he comes up on that perch, I give him food, he's gonna eventually start to relate like that food is a reward for me doing a certain thing which is coming up on my perch. And as long as you're consistent with that every single time, so you never feed him unless he comes up on that perch, if you've made that sound, and if you make the sound and he doesn't come up on the perch, you never reward him. And then eventually he's gonna get in his head like, oh, that's how I get my reward, which is food. Now, unfortunately, a lot of alligators go off of food during the winter months, so he's been eating really sporadically, but it's starting to warm up, and he's going to start going back on food, and I can start to train him more, and like I've mentioned in the past, I'll take you guys on the entire process, but as far as just having a, a super tame, beautiful alligator, it's about thousands and thousands of hours of handling and getting to know the animal, so he knows me, I know him, and that we have a relationship together, and I tell you what, I mean, I've had a lot of animals in my life, and RJ is definitely definitely right up there on the very tops of the coolest things I've ever worked with. I mean, just take a look at them. A tame alligator, people. I mean, I could do anything to him and I never have to worry about him biting. He's such an amazing animal. And as always, Jessica is always excited when we get gecko eggs, in particular cave gecko eggs or gargoyle gecko eggs. So you think we have some new eggs yeah, in here? Yeah, look at all these test holes she's got in here. Oh my gosh, so that's what they do? They'll actually like dig little yeah. holes? Yeah, she wants to like probably find out what is the best humidity and everything, ah, so. That's awesome. Her out. Look at how awesome they are. It looks this so is the female here. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can find here. Oh, oh, there oh they are. right there. Oh, they're so crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, they look perfect yeah, they too. They look good. And actually, do you want to candle them? Uh, sure. So we're going to go ahead and candle them. And basically what we're doing is we're just shining a light in them, just like this, to see if we see any dots at all. Do you see anything? Uh... Oh yeah, I see a little right dot there? right there. Yep, yep exactly, there it right is. at the very top. And it's really faint, but you can actually see that there's just a little dot, and that's basically what the embryo is. Now with gecko eggs, they can kind of roll around and it's not gonna hurt them like snake eggs. If you roll them, they'll literally drown in the embryo. So that's pretty awesome. So uh, we had two eggs from about a month ago. Now we have two eggs now. They lay about once a month, right? Yep, once a month. So okay. uh, it's about right on the dot because it was about yeah. 30 days ago that she laid, so. That's awesome, that is so cool. What's the incubation on these guys, do you know? It is seven. 70 to 90 days, but I'm expecting about 80 days just with the temperature. Temperature. We're getting. That's a long time to wait for these little geckos. Mm -hmm. But look at how cute their little tiny eggs. They have tiny. If you look, you can see that these are a little bit swollen compared to these. Yes, absolutely. These yep. are the old ones here, and yep. you can see how they're just a little bit bigger. They've just taken a little bit more moisture, and that's what happens. Those eggs are going to grow a little bit. So uh, that's awesome. Shouldn't be too long. About what? Maybe a month and a half or so for the first ones yep. to hatch. And then we've got about two and a half months for these. So hey, we're it's a start. You know, we're getting going. So that's good. Congratulations. Congratulations, awesome. 
Now you guys get to join me for one of the things that I really haven't been looking for today. Lori came to me and said, we've been selling a lot of Colombian rainbow boas and we didn't have them sexed out. So she was like, Brian, go and sex all of the Colombian rainbow boas. And uh, hey, listen, I love little rainbow boas and I think they're absolutely amazing, but they are little biters at this size. They tame out when they get bigger, but as babies, they are little pistols. And when you're sexing them, sometimes you get bit an awful lot. So let's hope we can get away. This one actually seems pretty good and basically all I'm doing is averting the hemipenes. The sex organs are right down here in the base of the tail so basically I'm just really gently just coming back like this and looking for hemipenes. This happens to be a male and then I'll mark all the cages. That way when Lori is packing she doesn't have to go through and sex. So basically what it comes down to is she doesn't want to get bit and she's like Brian you go ahead and you do all of it so you get bit and I won't. Oh this one's gonna bite me I know it. Oh okay here we go. Here's a there's a male right there. You can see the hemipenes. I'm going to get it back before it bites me all. And again, we're just going to keep on doing that. We're going to keep on averting the hemipenes. Another male. Ooh, you can see they are little pistols. I've been so lucky I haven't been bit yet, but I have a whole bunch of them to get through. Ow! Little sucker. <laughs> they have such little teeth. I mean, they're just little tiny teeth, but I tell you what, they really do brick hard. Oh my gosh, this is a little boy. This is actually a het leucistic. So, so far I've been pretty lucky. That was the first bite that I took after sexing like eight or 10 of them. So hopefully with any luck, uh, I'll continue to be lucky and not get bit a whole bunch. These ones here are a little bit bigger. They must have been born earlier in the year. And, oh, ow! It got me. I was gonna say it's gonna hurt a little bit more. It definitely hurt a little bit more. Oh my gosh. Please don't bite me, please. <laughs> And finally, this cute little monkey here. This is a really pretty one. At least it's a little bit smaller and it seems to be pretty docile. Uh, and this one is a boy. So really all said and done, I probably got bit 12 or 15 times. Uh, it hurt a little bit, not really too bad. Uh, but again, these guys always tame down when they get bigger, but as babies, they are definitely little pistols. Uh, thanks a lot, Lori, for having me do this and getting bit a bunch. Amongst everything else that's going on here, it's a busy day as usual. And Eric, Yo, my man, what's how's happening? things going now that he's taking care of baby snakes, adult cluberts, and now today you've got to do Ooh, leopard geckos. Leopard geckos. It keeps you busy. keeps you on your toes for sure. So, <laughs> but we got we got to get it done. These little animals need, you know, all the care they in the yeah. world. So, well, that's good. Well, I'm glad that Eric is busting his butt. He definitely uh, is doing good, but I'm going to let him get to work because you've got to, what you got to do with this whole rack. Yeah, this whole rack, and then we can come back and hopefully get everything fed tonight. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. I'll need it. Few people had asked me to update the two ball pythons that we've been following along from the very beginning all the way through the production season. And if you remember, the ghost pastel actually ovulated a while ago. Well, she just had her pre-lay shed. And that basically means that from the time they shed till the time they lay is about 30 days. I mean, they can be a few days early, they can be a few days late, but roughly about 30 days. So with any luck, this girl is gonna have a clutch of eggs in about 26, 27 days. And again, we kind of followed it along right from the beginning when we had the first breeding all the way through so you guys are kind of part of this breeding scheme and I am excited to see how many eggs she's gonna lay and then we can together guess what kind of baby she's gonna have and then we'll cut the eggs together and you guys can see the entire process but we had another girl which was the blue-eyed leucistic that was lagging behind a little bit when we first started ultrasound her she was 10 millimeters then she went to 14 then 16 the last time she was 20 millimeters so I'm hoping that she jumped a little bit so we have to go ahead and ultrasound her so here we go again last time she was at 20 millimeters and she hadn't grown much she went from 16 to 20 where a lot of other stuff went about 10 millimeters so I'm not really sure I mean overall she doesn't look like really huge but she has been breeding which is good as a matter of fact she was literally breeding yesterday so that is a really good sign because again I've talked to you guys about copulation can definitely spur on follicle growth so let's hope that she's popped from 20 millimeters so we'll see right here oh wait, wait 
Whoa, wait a second here. These actually look really nice. Oh my gosh, yeah, we're at 30 millimeters right here, guys. Take a look. We're at 30 millimeters right here. So she is definitely well on the road. I guarantee you that last copulation really helped out. So I have a feeling that we're gonna get clutches from both girls. And this blue-eyed Lucy is absolutely amazing. It's gonna be really cool. There's nothing like pulling a clutch of pearly white eggs from a pearly white leucistic ball python. So that's pretty good, guys. I think we're gonna hit 100% with the two females. I'll be honest with you, I was just hoping one of them was going to produce for you guys. Looks like we're going to have two to have a journey on. So how awesome is that? You, know, you don't see Bowser out like this very often. And when he's out and his head's up like that, that typically means that he's ready to feed. We've been feeding him these pellets right here, which is a Missouri crocodile food. And he seems to really like them, but he has been taking them off tongs. And we just have to throw them in and then he'll eventually go up and grab them. But I've been trying to get him to where he takes them off the tongs. So what do you say, since he's hunting right now, we see if he'll go ahead and take it or not. <laughs> still no go. Uh, he's still just a little bit shy. You got to remember, he spent like 20 something years in a big pond eating actually like wild fish and stuff like that. So he still isn't habituated to actually taking off the tongues yet. But nevertheless, he's cool and it's cool to see him out and about. There's so many amazing things happening right now. And I tell you what, this is going to be your daily dose of inspiration. I mean, continue to go after things because sometimes when it feels like things are really bad, sometimes the light is just around the corner. I'm not going to lie to you, you guys know just a short while ago I was not doing really good as far as my kind of feeling about the future and here we are just a short time later and I am so excited I've kind of mentally got myself back on track a lot of cool things are happening and trust me there are some amazing things going to be happening over the next few months I can't wait to start taking you guys on the day-to-day -day journey of the build out next door which is coming sooner and sooner as we're kind of planning and getting all the pieces and parts together it's going to be absolutely incredible as a matter of fact next week we may get the first cages that we're going to start getting put in there so that's going to be exciting there's obviously a lot of breeding going on a whole bunch of things that i'm not quite ready to talk to you guys about but regardless it's amazing and i just love bringing you guys along on this journey your support really inspires me i mean i can't tell you guys how much you mean to me i know you may think that hey i'm just watching your video but the truth is you're joining me on this life adventure and you inspire me to be the best that i possibly can be and i appreciate you guys for that please have an amazing day go out there and do something amazing amazing today. Be more. Be something that you want to be, and I know your life is going to be incredible. Before we get out of here, can you do me a couple favors, please? Can you smash that like button, as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video, which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today, and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>